Hello my soccer universe, let's look back what happened in Europe's big leagues. The top game of the Eredivisie ended with the expected 2-1 away win for PSV at AZ. Surely didn't help that after 10 minutes AZ had a man sent off and then it came quickly. Luc de Jong and Noah Lang scoring the goals in the 15th and the 22nd minute. PSV seeing the game out dominating the game very late on. Casius pulled one back for AZ. Meanwhile, Twente dropped points at Valva. It could have been even worse because the Twente equalizer came in stoppage time after staying assist 18 makes it 2 2. Feyenoord remained one of the unbeaten sides in the Eredivisie, and this time they even get a win. A very emphatic one at the go ahead Eagles with a 5 1 away win. That's probably the best performance they have put in so far this season. But record wise, it is Utrecht that still keep up with PSV getting a 7th win of the season. This time a 1 0 away win at newly promoted Ron who have not been doing that badly in the league. Kathleen gets the goal in the 20th minute and Utrecht see out that win. Can they really push PSV? That's the big question. However, the match of the weekend definitely happened in Almere with Ajax beating Heracles 4-3 away from home. Heracles twice took the lead in the first half only to be equalized twice and then Wout Weichel scores two second half goals with the winner penalty in the 82nd minute to make it 4-3. <laughs> There were actually two games this weekend in the German Bundesliga that stood out. The first one happened in Leverkusen where the home side took on Frankfurt and Leverkusen got a 2-1 win. A win that sees them now going to the top four and Frankfurt falling to sixth place. How is relatively tight on top of the table with the top seven only separated by six points. It was also a comeback win because Victor Boniface misses a penalty early on. Weird penalty call to be honest. Then Marmus shows him how it's done better. Gives Frankfurt the lead in the 15th minute. However, 10 minutes later, Andre did a wonderful goal with two one twos in the build up before he puts it into the net. Actually, check that one out. And Leverkusen then in a really tight game get the winner through Boniface after a comedy of errors and deflections in the Frankfurt defense. The other top game was, of course, Bayern Munich against Stuttgart, a game that was way tighter than a final scoreline might suggest. Both teams being relatively pressing high intensity. The game then turned in the 57th minute when Harry Kane from far out just takes a wicked shot. And it's 1-0 for Bayern. Three minutes later, he wills the ball into the make it 2-0. And he gets a hat-trick in the 80th minute. Kingsley Command then adds a fourth. As I said, the game was way tighter than the 4-0 final scoreline. But once the game opened up, you could see the Bayern are way more dangerous up front. Bayern stay top of the table. Meanwhile, on Friday, Dortmund get another win. Another hard fought win. 2-1 over St. Pauli, but really not much to talk home about. It needed an 83rd minute goal by Girassi to secure the three points. On the back of his call up to the national team Kleindienst actually scores twice against his former club to settle the game in the second half first it's a really brilliant back heel and then he also converts a penalty could have had a hat trick however Heidenheim were also quite well in that game was a rather entertaining 3-2 win I have not talked too much about Freiburg this season however they sit now third in the table after 3-1 win over Augsburg the game started kind of meh but then Freiburg turned it on in the last 10 minutes of the first half it is Griefer who opens the score and Lienhardt shortly after had it in and a brilliant shot by Günther just before the half makes it 3-0 Augsburg completely destroyed they pull one back in the second half but never could recoup from those three strikes by Freiburg Mainz fans had a lot of not so nice things to say about Jürgen Klopp who went to Red Bull of course but it is Leipzig who get the win through Xavi Simons and Orban already in the first half after last year's turgid season Union Berlin actually go back into the European spots staying now in fifth place they have a 2-0 away win at Holstein Kiel workman like win but only Berlin win nonetheless maybe they're back and while they might not be sitting very high in the table at the moment Werder Bremen is another really good side this season they get a 4-2 away win at Ralf Hasenhüttl's Wolfsburg three goals early in the second half settled the game in favor of Werder Bremen in meanwhile also Wolfsburg had a player sent off they still pull one back with a man less but it's a 2 for home loss <music> Monaco lose their top spot in the table because they only managed a nil-nil draw at home against Lille and are actually happy about that because they played for half an hour with a man less. And of course PSG take advantage of the glitch with a 4-2 home win over Strasbourg with Mayulo, Asensio, Barcola and Lee Kang Ying scoring the four goals. It was probably a lot more dominant than the final score and would suggest as Strasbourg pulled one back very late. Meanwhile Brest have a hard time getting their season going. They held to a 1-1 draw at home 
home to local rivals Ren conceding a late equalizer. Ahead of the big derby against Lille, Loss at least get a win. It's a 2 0 away win at Saint Etienne. Loss now in fifth place, right behind their big rivals. We also had a big statement win by Lyon, 4 0 at Le Havre, which is the biggest win of the season. Abner, Fofana, Lacazette, and Ben Rama getting the goals. Meanwhile, I continue Keito Nakamura watch, who gets another goal for us. However, it's too little too late. It's a 95th minute consolation goal after Osea already had 2 0 lead, in addition, missing a penalty. And finally, the other Olympic OM get also a big win. This time it's a 5 0 at local rivals Montpellier. Is this really a rivalry? It's Wahi, Marit, Heuberg, Greenwood, and Luis Enrique scoring the five goals. And after a little blip, the Zebris men are back to good form and maybe they can push for a Champions League spot for real this season. The La Liga weekend started off with a little upset as Real Valladolid beat Alaves 3-2 away from home. Quite an exciting game. Iñaki Williams once again was the big hero in Athletic Club's 4-1 destruction of Espanyol, scoring a brace in the first half. He is definitely one of the all-time greats for that club. In a typically hard-fought match at El Sadar, Osasuna lose at home to Betis 2-1. Betis now remain in the seventh spot. They usually finish up at the end of every league season as of late. Technically, it was only a mid table clash. However, it stuck out from the fixture list that Girona took on Real Sociedad. It's Real Sociedad who win it thanks to an Oyasabal goal just before the half time. Meanwhile, Celta Vigo really give Real Madrid all that they can have. Probably were the better team overall. However, Real Madrid just have the better players. Mbappé and Vinny Jr. scored the two goals to give Real Madrid a win and Luka Modric becomes the oldest ever player to play for Real Madrid. Yes, older than Puskas, which is also quite remarkable. But again, the most remarkable thing is probably this young Celta side with a lot of local players that should have probably more points than they currently do have. Meanwhile, Mallorca remained a surprise package of La Liga, sitting in sixth place after getting a 1-0 win over Rayo Vallecano. Can they keep this up and push potentially for a European spot? History shows that La Liga is very unforgiving for surprise teams. A brace by Serloth and a goal by Griezmann turn around a halftime deficit for Atletico Madrid against Lega. One of the stands, of course, was closed after the incidents at the Derby. Overall, Atletico Madrid look all right, but I guess more than a third place is not in there this season. And I'm saying this because Barcelona are absolutely flying. This time we get a 5-1 win over Sevilla with, of course, Lewandowski on the score sheet again, scoring twice. First one came through a penalty. Rafinha also assists him. The big emotional moment was Gavi's return, who got the captain's armband and again went in for tackles as he's wont to do. And the opposite of Barcelona have to be Valencia, who now sit bottom of the table after losing at home to Las Palmas. Almost 3-2 despite having an early lead. Yeah, didn't help that Pepelo also was sent off. There are dark, dark clouds over this Valencia team this season. <laughs> Kudos may have given West Ham a lead at Spurs. However, Spurs come roaring back, especially in the second half, and win it 4-1. Aston Villa win 3-1 at a strong Fulham side. However, things could have turned quite differently if Ander Pereira would have not missed his penalty. Everton get the slightest of separation from the bottom teams by winning 2-0 at still winless Ipswich, with Ndaya and Keane scoring the two winning goals in the first half. Of course, you had to fear the worst for United, and Brentford took a lead through Pinnock, Late in the first half, however, after the half, they really turned around. Garnacho get an early equalizer. And then Hoyland, after a really nice attacking move, lobs the goalkeeper and give United a 2-1 win that might actually calm things down a little bit. Given the recent record, I might have a hard time saying the Brighton are a surprise team, but I still feel they're kind of a surprise team. And now they get a 1-0 away win at Newcastle with Danny Welbeck scoring the winning goal. Great work done by Hützler. Like Everton, Leicester also gained a little bit of separation towards the bottom half thanks to a 3-2 away win at Southampton despite being down 2-0 at the halftime. The winner came through Jordan Ayew deep in stoppage time. The most remarkable result also came on the south coast with Bournemouth beating Arsenal 2-0 at home, but this was conditioned by a red card in the first half through William Saliba, last man kind of on the halfway line. It is the third send-off for Arsenal already and this might cause them because every time they get a red card they have been dropping points. In the end it's Christian Kluivert who get the winning goals and Arsenal are already in a big bind needing to get wins now to stay up in the title race. Because unlike Arsenal, Manchester City get a messy 2-1 away win at Wolf 
Wolves coming back after Strand Larsen had given Wolves the lead. Guardiol equalizes just before the half and then it's deep in stoppage time when Stones makes it 2-1 for an important win for City. The big match of the round of course saw Liverpool take on Chelsea in a really good game I gotta say. Liverpool overall the better team having tons of control taking a lead through a Salah penalty. There was another penalty given that was then chalked off because Sanchez did play the ball just before he takes down Salah. Nico Jackson then equalizes right after the half. There's a nice Casado pass. However Curtis Jones come back and scores the winner for Liverpool who then see the game out in a controlling fashion. It's rather unusual for Liverpool especially if you look at the club era. Liverpool stay top of the table. Arsenal up next. And things are looking really bad for Crystal Palace losing this time 1-0 at Nottingham Forest. Oliver Glasner so is still winless whereas Forest in the top half of the table. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!